Okay, so one final principle for the session today. Um, in order for any of this to work with the grammar of graphics um, and with ggplot in general, your data has to be in a specific format um, called a tidy format. This doesn't mean that it's like clean, there's no errors in it, it doesn't mean anything like that. It refers to the structure of the data. Um, and we'll talk about what tidy data specifically means in the next slide. Um, but throughout the semester, you're going to be working with an R package called Tidyverse. And on the first day of class, we talked about that, um, where the Tidyverse is really just a collection of different R packages that work well together. They work well together, and they work well with tidy data, um, the data that is formatted in this specific way. Um, and so as long as you have data that is in a tidy form, sticking it into ggplot is fairly easy. You just tell it to use a specific column. If the data is not tidy, you do need to clean it up a little bit and reshape it. Um, but there are functions to help you with that, and we'll learn all about that throughout this mini semester. So for, for data to be tidy, it has to meet three requirements. Every variable has to have its own column. So if you're talking about years with the Gapminder data, for instance, you'll have one single column for a year. You won't have a column for 2007 and a column for 2008 and a column for 2009. You'll just have a column called year, and it'll have 2007 repeated and 2008 repeated. Um, every observation has to have its own row. And so if you have Afghanistan in 2007, that's an observation. Afghanistan in 2008 is also an observation. And then Afghanistan 2009 is yet another row. And so you have lots of repeated Afghanistans, but for 2007, 2008, 2009. And then finally, each value has its own cell. So as long as you meet these three requirements, then you have tidy data. So one way, of, like a graphical way of looking at this is you have um, variables that are specific columns, you have observations that are specific rows, and then you have values um, in each of those columns and rows. Um, you're familiar with this concept. Um, you just haven't heard it be called tidy or untidy. So untidy, you see this in the real world all the time. You make spreadsheets like this all the time. Spreadsheets are very convenient for writing stuff down and for collecting data. And so if you have something like this, if you have some sort of incident report for different offices, um, you're going to have a column for each of these years. So you have 2015, 2016, 2017. You have rows for the different offices here. Um, you have the actual numbers. Sometimes you can add extra information. Like if you highlight these, that means it came from some other source. If it's bold, it means like check it. It needs extra verification, something like that. So this is a very typical Excel sheet um, that you have potentially created something similar to it. This is not tidy data because it does not have um, a column for year, a column for number of in incidents, a column for whether needs whether these um, incidents need verification, a column if it came from a different source. So you have these variables, but they're spread throughout this data, and this this kind of data will not work in ggplot. This version, if we tidy it, will look like this, where you have a column for office, you have a column for year for incidents, for whether it needs verification, for whether it came from a different source. Um, this right here works great for computers. Um, you just tell it to use this year column, and it'll use it. Tell it to use incidents, it'll use it. This kind of data structure is really bad for humans. This is really hard to type in because um, everything's getting repeated a lot. And so if you want to add a new row or add new numbers for 2018, then you're going to have to select three of these rows and create new rows and make sure you type everything right. For like data entry, something like this is actually pretty easy. You just, if you want to add 2018, you type 2018 right here and then add the numbers and you're done. And so there are valid reasons for using untidy data. Untidy does not mean bad. It just means it's not structured in a way that will work with computers, that will work with ggplot, that will work with models or anything like that. But there are functions in R that let you switch between these two forms here. And so um, another word for tidy data is long data, so where you're repeating all of these things. So this was like repeating 2017, 2018, 2019. Well, you might have like wide data where you'll have columns for each of those years. Um, it's fairly trivial to switch between these things. And so if you're collecting data and you have like 
people typing in information, it might be easiest to have them use a wide format. And then you can use an R function to switch them. Um, the R functions that you use are called pivot longer and pivot wider. Um, they used to be called gather and spread, and that's where this animation came from here, is back in the day when it was called those. But essentially, if you watch this animation enough, you'll see that it's moving kind of these this wide data into this long data, and you're not losing anything. It's just rearranging where the cells are and what the columns are. And so by doing that, you can convert your data from wide and untidy to long and tidy. And you'll get example. Or you'll get practice doing that with lots of examples. And, um, you'll learn how to do that. So that is tidy data.